Hey, this is Kendrick with Technology Interpreters, and so today we're hacking cars. But before we get started, please don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. Uh, because the purpose of my channel is to help you to find, like if you're not working in cybersecurity, my goal is to help you to gain the skills necessary to get a job in cybersecurity by pointing you to resources. Also going through very detailed tutorials, talking about the mindset of hacking, not just performing the actions. And for those of you working in cybersecurity, my goal is to help you to further your skills, grow your skills so that you can progress in your career in cybersecurity. My name is Kendrick. I work as a blue teamer by day, but I'm a red teamer when I'm on YouTube and hacking on Twitch. By the way, don't forget to follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash technology underscore interpreters. Okay, so let's get into the vehicle. So what we have here, we are getting into the vehicle. Let's get into the video. So what we have here is there's a vehicle that was found, but they don't have any information, including the VIN number or the information. And so our goal in this video is to be able to hack into the vehicle system. And the VIN number is apparently like repeated in the serial communications. Now what's serial inside your car, there's a actual network of things that talk to each other. And so you can actually take captures of that vehicle internal network. And so today we're going to take some captures. We're not going to take them. We've already been provided with the captures. We're going to take them and you don't just pop these in Wireshark. Okay. This is going to be different. We're going to be hacking this car using an oscilloscope. Okay. All right. I'll explain more in detail in just a second. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to download the files and we've already downloaded the files. And I'm going to be referencing my script over here. All right. So based on that, we've already got the files here and I'm going to go ahead and jump into the folder where the files are. So it's this folder called unique. And then you see there's another file right here. So this is a dot cell file. I had no clue what dot cell files, by the way, shout out to the Twitch chat. We hacked this together. I could not have done this without them. They hung in there until we actually cracked this one. Now the cell file is simply a archive file and I've actually extracted it. And inside it has a, t a digital file, which I think it's a, I don't know if it's left and right, but it's two, a zero and one digital file of the digital communication. And then it has a zero and one file of analog communication from the vehicle. It also has this JSON file. Now, of course me, I went to the JSON file, try to see if I could find anything in the JSON file to, you know, get the easy win. But unfortunately there was no easy win. So we had to move on. So once we have the files downloaded, we need to go and let's talk about the, uh, the, the actual program we're going to use to hack it. Okay. So I'm going to go up a few folders and there's this program I had to download. It's called logic. Okay. Logic two, three, three, seven is what I used. I had no idea what this program was or what it did. So I had to find out. So apparently if you want this program, you can go to www.salealeae.com slash downloads. And you can download this tool. It's essentially, essentially an oscilloscope, which allows you to be able to use frequency to determine communication. Now, let me explain this for a second. The way that you know that computers are digital, ones and zeros, ones and zeros. But the thing is, all the equipment that's reading those ones and zeros within a protocol, it has to know at what interval to be reading the ones and the zeros, right? It operates based on time and binary zero one plus timing. And so what an oscilloscope does is you can essentially tune the oscilloscope to the timing of the serial communication, read the ones and zeros and interpret it into data. How freaking cool is that? I mean, that's absolutely insane. I knew about this and I knew oscilloscopes were used with hacking, but I didn't get it until last night. That's why you should be doing something like hack the box or try hack me or any of those others, blue team, uh, blue team, something online or something like, anyway, there are plenty out there. Okay. So you should be doing this. So that being said, got the program, got it downloaded. And before you can run the program, you have to make it, uh, allow it to execute. So right click on the program, go to permissions and you have to check allow file to run this program. Once you do that, you can just double click the program. Let's make sure I'm on script here. Okay, good. I'm doing a good job today. And it's a bad time because my sinuses just started acting up. But we're going to press forward. So the program is opening right now. 
And then, man, it was funny on stream. I had to figure out, like, I'm sorry, I had to start talking into the mic, but I'm trying to do the camera and the mic at the same time. But I had to figure out how to use the program because I had no clue whatsoever what to do with this program. So once it's open, I'm going to leave this kind of set so you can kind of see it. I went to file and open capture. So the thing is, I did not know what a cell file was. It's essentially more what I would consider a analog or and digital capture of data. So go in here, open in the cell file. That didn't work. Okay, I think I have to do import. Let's try this. No, I should be able to open the capture. That's it, so yeah, let's, let's try this again. Open a browser. Okay, there's my capture. So I'm in a unique folder and this is the file that I mentioned. There's a cell file. That's gonna take a second. So if you see at the bottom, there's a little progress bar and it says decompress and capture. It's a lot of data, no cap. It is a lot of data. <laughs> that's, that's a pun, right? I said no cap, and it's actually a capture. Yes, so it is a cap. So with that being said, it's deserializing the data stores. I don't know what that means. It's, it's too smart for me. But either way, we're about to get into the fun part because now we've got to start the configuration phase so that we can line up and get actual data out of this. So this is what you start off with, okay? And uh, doesn't look like much. It really doesn't. And in the beginning, you can kind of tell, okay, ones and zeros, that's, that's data. You know, I think this is analog down here, but I'm not sure, to be honest. But I know I'm going to be working here. That's definitely digital. That's, that's clear ups and downs. Now, one of the things it says, and I'm not going to get into this because I, I want to get more experience with this tool and then come back and do a very detailed tutorial on the tool itself. But what you can do is, I'm going to zoom in here. And it says that you can take the initial communication here. And then there's a formula that they provided for us to be able to get the time. And I don't have that link. If I can find that link, I'll include it in the video, but there's an actual formula that you can use based on the first entry here to determine what the frequency is. Uh, and you can see right there, it says the width is 119.904 Hertz. If you see when I hover over this, it's right here on the screen. Look at that, 119. Dot 904 kilohertz. That's the width of that. Let's look at this one. That's 130. That's 41. So the thing is, looking at here, what we determine is that, well, we've got to figure out and we know what's closest. So we started doing some digging. And, and I'm trying to explain this because this is very complicated. And I'm still trying to make sure I fully grasp it. But I, I mean, I can explain it. But what we had to do is we had to based on that first entry, kind of guess what the frequency was. And then the more we did research, the more we found that stuff like that, the frequencies typically before can, the, tip, the frequencies that we're looking at typically pointed towards can. So somebody in chat who has some experience say, it's definitely can, it's definitely can. And so what is can? It's controller area network. This is what that refers to. And then we started digging further. We found that CAN typically operates at 150, uh, I'm sorry, 125 or 250 for the baud rate. Baud rate is the rate of communication. This is like old modem type talk right here. And honestly, I cannot go super detailed into that. But I do understand that baud rates are very important and it just controls the rate at which you're communicating. So once we determine what the actual baud rate was, I need to go over here and once we determine what the protocol was, I go over here and I need to add, and let's make sure I see everything I need to see. All right, going down here, let's see, time and markers, analyzer. So I need to click on analyzers on the right side. Make sure y'all can see that. Yeah, it's the green button and two down is analyzers. And then what I was doing wrong before is I was choosing these analyzers. It has three or four defaults. You click the plus sign and you choose can. Very important. And there's a lot you can work with. It's a very amazing tool. So once I chose CAN, I get a chance to set my bit rate. And my bit rate is 125.000. So that's just based on doing some research. Remember, hacking is all about reading, doing reconnaissance, and understanding what your target is in order to be successful. So once I was able to do that, I then noticed that, oh, <laughs> we got stuff here. Okay? Because before, a lot of times when you have it configured wrong, It'll give you error messages up top. But I noticed that, oh, wow, when we finally got it tuned, 
look, that's that's the control. Control, there's data, data. So I'm actually seeing data in this file. I was like, cool. So then somebody from the chat, they got smart. So what you can do is you can take this, you're gonna love this. This is where it gets really good. Okay, so now, and for those of you who haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button right now. If you're still here, hit the like button. This is where it gets crazy awesome. So over here on these fills, I can take this and I can make this bigger. And as I make this bigger, you'll start to see more fills. And okay. And so uh, what we're looking here, okay, so there's your data right there, but you got a whole bunch of other fills. You got CRCs and all that kind of stuff, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I wanna, I wanna get rid of some of these fills. So don't click on export table yet. So I'm gonna get rid of the start time. I'm gonna get rid of the duration. I'm gonna get rid of the data or no, I mean identifier, not the data, we want the data, the numeric bytes and the CRC. Got rid of all of this stuff. And then I want to export this, this file, export the table. I'm gonna export all that's visible because I only want what I'm showing right now. Let's see search criteria and I'm gonna export it as a CSV. And so once I do this, let's see, I'm gonna put this in the, uh, let's put it in a unique folder. And let's just call it uh, cam data. So we're going to save this. Now we got a folder called cam data. Let's go to the unique folder. Right here, there's our cam data. I'm going to right click. I'm going to open this in leaf pad. I'm doing leaf pad instead of mouse pad. And a lot of my exercises I did uh, mouse pad, but mouse pad doesn't have a find and replace. Leaf pad doesn't, well, let's see, does it have a find and replace? It does, but oh, it does have replaced, but it takes a long time. So I'm just going to show you and walk you through or tell you what I did. So let's see if we can make this bigger. Can't. Uh, OK, let's see if I can make the font just a little bit bigger for you, because this is important. I want you all to see this. All right. So I can bump this up. That's pretty. That's pretty. I think this will be good enough for you all to see. All right. So you can kind of see the data here. So what we did or what the chat did <laughs> And big shout out to the person. I can't remember who exactly in chat did it. Very smart. You want to do a case, case sensitive because once again, we know what the flag format is for Hack the Box. We know what we're looking for. And so since we know what we're looking for, we can narrow it down. So match the case and I type the capital H. There's a lowercase H's here, but there's not that many capital H's. Okay, so that was unsuccessful. Let's find the next capital H. And look at this. Look, H T B. Pack the box. Open brace. V one N. Keep going. Dash. So what I did is I went through and I did a find and replace on this. I got rid of all of this. And then I did a find and replace on this. And there was a few more things. And I replaced everything, like so all this wrong, because like I said, I want the one, so I don't need this in front of, the, these are the numbers that auto regenerate. They're not part of the file. So get rid of the, the data in front of it, get rid of the data behind it. And when I finished, I ended up with something that was really nice and neat, the actual flag. So let's see if I can put it right here so you can see what it looks like in the end. That's what I ended up with. That's the flag, I submitted that, and that was the end of the game. We actually successfully hacked the vehicle. If you found this, vi this video to be interesting, entertaining, or helpful in any way, and or even encouraging, please leave comments and let me know that I'm doing some good here. Well, and once again, thank you so much for watching this entire video. Don't forget to drop a like a video, and please subscribe to my channel uh, for future videos on cybersecurity. Anything related to helping you to grow in this career, I'm trying to do it. And also, don't forget to come to live streams on Twitch. The Twitch community is amazing. We actually crushed it. And right now, cybersecurity is the number one requested category on Twitch. And I've heard from here, well, I've heard through the grapevine from some people who are in John Hammond streams that this is very likely going to happen. So on Twitch, there will be a cybersecurity like category on Twitch. So you can just go and automatically find us who are streaming over there. Once again, technology interpreters on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel.